All right, now we're gonna get into the really fun stuff and I'm gonna show you how to do basically projection mapping. Now, it's, it's not the kind of projection mapping where you make a building come apart and break through and you know map the castle like you see in Disney World, but it is the same principles. And although that can be done with QLab using additional software, um, the way that 90% of us are going to be using uh, QLab to do projection mapping is on the very basic levels is something as simple as trying to adjust the screen size. Um, and what do, you, what do I mean by that? Well, I get to a lot of venues where I bring in my individual screen and they're freaking out because I'm going to go into their projector and I'm going to zoom in or I'm going to change the perspective. Or in many cases, I was projecting like waterfalls on the stage. And I needed the, the projection to hit the very top to the very bottom of the stage floor. In other words, the, otherwise the waterfalls kind of stop and at five feet from the ground, they disappear. That doesn't look realistic at all. So I said, look, just zoom out. Oh, you can't do that because if we zoom out the projector, it's going to start to wash the sides of the stage and the proscenium and hit. I said, don't worry. Zoom it out as far as you can until I can get the bottom to the top or the width covered. Then I will correct that in my surfaces. So let's show you the really basic way of just cropping your image to fit whatever screen you want, no matter how far back or close it is uh, on your stage or the different shape screens you may be using. So on a real basic level, first, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> None of this would be happening if I did not have coffee by my side at all times. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little um, my little hub. In this case, I'm using one of my many uh, hubs. This is my cable creation. Uh, actually, I have Velcro right there, and it sticks right to my side of my box. Uh, I'm going to plug the HDMI, which is a little projector sitting behind me. I'm going to do kind of a mini demonstration here for you. I didn't feel like dragging all of this into the big theater, uh, so we're just going to set up kind of a fake little mini stage right here uh, in my room. So I'm going to plug that into HDMI. I'm going to, of course, plug that in to my computer screen. Sorry, plug that into my computer. So as you can see right now, my projector is turning on, uh, and I have not aligned this projector at all. I have just set it down aimed it the direction I want, and I hit power, okay? Normally, you need to get the remote control, and you need to, you need to do keystoning, you need to do the alignment, it had to be perfectly center, all those kind of things. I'm going to show you how to get by without having to do any of that. So, um, first thing I want to make sure you do is you're going to go in here to settings, and you're going to click this brand new little button right here that they've just added. At least for me, anyway. They just about, what, a couple months ago. Uh, the displays, display setup. You used to have to go to settings. Then from settings, you have to go over to displays and open that up. Now it's awesome. It's just one little button right inside QLab that opens up your displays automatically, which I clearly haven't done on this user. <laughs> and in this case, it's my Epson projector. And it says right here automatically that my dimensions are 1280 by 800. Yes, not a very high quality projector, my apologies. But this is what I was able to fly with, so that's what I brought. Um, we're going to name that main projector screen. Okay? And in this case, I'm going to hit grid so I can get a nice, big, bright view, wow, of that projector. And as you can see, it is all turned sideways. It's hitting everything incorrectly all that kind of fun stuff. So to stop that problem, um, we can simply go over here to constraints. We can slide that constraint over as I showed you in a previous video. We can slide the bottom up. We can bring the left in. And we can bring the top down to there. Now, as I said, my projector is completely sideways, so obviously the easiest way to get rid of that diagonal problem is going to be to go to your projector and tilt it. <laughs> Organize it. Level it first. That is the easiest way to fix that. Um, so let's do that for this particular purpose, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to do it without having to go there to your theater's projector system. So let me fix this. We'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, uh, I did fix the tilt pretty close. Um, I just stuck a battery underneath it. <laughs> it kind of went back up like that. So it got close. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough for this demonstration. So uh, let's go back here and kind of fix this. Um, 
let's see. There we go. Let's fix this. Uh, we got to do probably the right hand side a little bit. Where are we at? Get that right, right to that wall there. Yep. We're gonna get that, bring the top down more now. Where we'll still, we're still crooked. Oh, whatever. We're close enough. And uh, and then the bottom down, just like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've managed to project uh, just in that back wall right there. Okay. So that's the back wall screen. Okay. So let's say that's the backdrop of our entire stage that is going to fit that perfectly. So now if I would want to go put a uh, image back there, the image would fit just perfectly to that. Okay. Uh, now let's say you have a part of the show where you have a small little screen and the small little screen is going to stand right here and it's about halfway to the, in the front of the stage like that. Um, obviously, if I um, add a new surface, um, if I click that, we are completely incorrect. Uh, if I use the previous mapped one, that is still way too big. It's not going to work on that. Um, but but check it out. If I create a new surface, which I just did, and then I go in here to constraints, we're going to constrain that side by bringing this in. Right to there, bringing that one in right to there. And of course, if you had the exact numbers, you could type in the numbers manually if you didn't want to drag it like I'm doing now. Now, my projector is lower than my table, so I can't get, well, I guess I can get to the bottom. Okay, I'm wrong. I thought I'd hit the, uh, the wall before I did that. And uh, we can bring the top in like that. Okay, now um, we could choose to light this area up, but let's say that's the proscenium of the stage and we don't want to light the proscenium of the stage, so we're going to take it off just like that. And let's say you don't want these corners lit up. We could then come in more so that indentation creates a 3D graphic, kind of becomes three-dimensional, and we could do it like that. So now the surface is, is illuminated only inside that box, all right? So let's add a curiosity inside um, mini screen. Okay. Let's duplicate that. And this time we're going to light up the outside as well. So we're going to spread that open like this. Yep. We're going to move this one out like that. Just off so it doesn't go too far like that. And we're gonna bring the top up like that. And because the projector is crooked, it's gonna be a little bit off. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, full mini screen order. All right, so I grabbed a few different graphics in here. Uh, and just to show you how I can choose, put those graphics wherever I want. I could put that on the mini screen. And when I fire it, um, that is the full outside. Now that doesn't look good because there's an indent there and now the letters are coming out so it doesn't look nice for the show, right? So we can hit escape. We can then change that to inside the mini screen and now it fits just in there just like that. Now obviously I'm using such a small amount of that projection screen uh, because the projector is way too far away for this little fake kind of demonstration. Um, but just to show you out of the entire image and, and uh, pixels that that projector can do, this is all we're actually projecting on at the moment. So uh, if you zoom in on this window here, it'll tell you somewhere here, here it goes. We're only doing out of a 12, uh, 1,280 pixels by 800 pixels, we're only actually projecting 204 by 242. That's horrible. <laughs> but my point is, uh, if you had a projection screen, which is normally going to fill up your whole stage, you would not be overshooting the way I'm doing here in this demonstration. Uh, you could very easily bring that in and the quality of this will still be the same. Okay. Not the same, but it'll be, it'll be so minute. You won't notice it, especially if you're using HD. Um, 
so let's give another example here. That's probably the time you're going to see it the worst is if you use text uh, or something like that that has really uh, you know small font where you can start seeing the, the quality degrading uh, in that. Um, but if you're doing something like the American flag graphic that we used before, um, you can see you're probably not going to notice hardly any difference there at all, especially if you didn't do it in the constraint and you decided to do custom geometry and then you could, let's make that a loop, oh, I lost it, here you go, and then we're going to downsize that graphic. Now do you see how it does not change? This doesn't get any bigger. It stays inside that surface, which is just phenomenal. So now there's your American flag there. Uh, and you could also copy that same video loop. Just uh, That's by the way, it's Command C, Command V, just like any other copy and paste in your computer. Uh, and this time we're gonna do our entire main projection screen. Oh, I did the wrong one, that's what right here. Main projection screen, yep. And uh, we're going to do, which one did I do here? That's not right. This one is going to go to main projector screen. Yep. So there's American flag there. Let's go ahead and make that uh, full surface. And if I change the aspect ratio. Now, do you see what happened? I laid, uh, played that video on top and it covered up the other screen down here. And this is what I was saying in the previous video about layering, layering your surfaces. If you go in here to your surfaces and you say that the main projector screen is always, always going to be layered on the bottom, which is the back, okay? So now it does not matter when I fire that first video, the order does not matter. So if I go here and fire this little tiny one, and then I fire the entire back one, it's gonna remain in the back. But here's the cool thing. The video is actually playing on the border of this one right here because I allowed it to do that. Um, we can talk about masking later to prevent that from happening. Uh, but in this case, it actually looks really cool, okay? So there's your American flag. Of course, you can mess around with that so much by going in here to uh, custom geometry and you could be uh, zooming in so only the stripes show in the back. Uh, so the stripes are only in the back. You could then go to the um, mini screen and you could say, show me only the blue stars. So now you're gonna get only the stars on that. So literally you're just, you're mapping that entire area and you're coming up with a very unique, oh, looks like we're catching the blue there a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And now you only have the blue stars in the center and the stripes in the back. Uh, so if you have multiple set pieces on stage, you can design them however you want. Um, and this is, and still while that's playing, you then could add something else. You could add an alpha channel on top of that we're gonna put it inside the mini screen. Oh, which one I want here? I want the. Uh, full service. Yeah. Uh, so let's play this one in a loop on top of everything right there. And now my initials are there. Once again, you can customize the geometry on that one as well. Make it nice and big, and you can move that. Now, if I move that out, because as you can see, I have full control in moving that around, but if I move it up, it does not go to the next surface. It stays right where it's meant to stay, only on that surface. Nothing else will be moving around at all. So that's a prime example of a really easy way of mapping your stage. And uh, in many cases, I don't do layers like this. Uh, in most cases, it's simply going to be when the curtain is down, I am going to be projecting the entire uh, background just like that. And this screen won't be here. The big screen is in front of it and I wanna catch the entire area. But then there's times when the screen comes up 
and I want to project something only on the mini screen, which is all the way in the back, which looks like this. And uh, I do have a graphic that I'll show you here, which is actually my stage sets. And you can see how I have a small screen very similar to this in the middle of the stage. Um, so this is basically how you can get it to adapt any of those surfaces. It's really, really easy to do. It's really, really fun. Um, and we're going to show you about masking and how to do custom shapes as well. Uh, but our next video is going to be showing you not on constraints. It's going to be showing you how to actually um, do something really cool, not caring what position the projector's in or what angle the projector's in. You're going to be able to warp that image and get it to fit no matter how you are. So check this next one out right now.